there, this is Charlie and I'm coming to you today with my daily dose of business tech inspiration. Topic number 236, choosing a domain name. It says that reflects your brand, but I'm just going to go with choosing a domain name because, oh my goodness, how much time have you guys spent trying to find a domain name that works for you and is available? There's a few things that you need to consider when you choose a domain name, one that, and preferably one that reflects your brand or works with your brand. Let's go through it. So first of all, let's talk about what a domain name is for those of you that are just joining in and sort of going, we, we have no idea what a, a domain name even is or why it's important. Yesterday, I spoke about hosting, which is the physical place that your 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 website resides or the files for your website resides if you were to think on a website as a house the physical structure that is the house that is that is what a website is and that house resides at an address which is normally one two three anywhere street anywhere town this city the world okay so that that's the address of the house the domain name is something that attaches to the location of the house, but it doesn't, whilst it uses the address of the house, it doesn't mean that the people who are coming to your house need to remember the actual physical details, like the 123 Anyway Street. The domain name could be something like Charlie's Place. We're going to Charlie's Place. And everyone knows that Charlie's Place is 123 Anywhere Street. So they rock up to 123 Anywhere Street and, oh, look, there's Charlie's Place. So Charlie's Place is the domain name. It's a thing that simplifies finding the, or remembering how to get to the, the house that you want to get to. Now, if Charlie moves from 123 Anywhere Street to 1000 I'm Here Now Street, uh, we can update everyone's address books. Let's just virtually we have to update everyone's address books and the next time they say we're going to a charlie's house they end up with they end up going to 1000 i'm here now street oh sorry a bit dry in here so that's what your domain name is domain the domain name is the thing that allows people to get to your website on the internet without having to remember the physical address of it because that physical address when it's on the internet is a lot more confusing than a, a house is than a street address on for a house okay so that's what the domain name is let's talk about what you need to think about when you're choosing a domain name and why why it's important the thing that you need one of the things and i think it's high high on my list of things to remember it needs to be simple and it needs to be memorable if it's not simple, easy to spell, and it's not memorable, customers are not going to remember it and customers are going to end up going elsewhere. Uh, even if it's because if you've got it misspelt or it's not easy to spell and someone else has taken an easier spelling, they could easily just take that traffic because they've now got that domain name. Whether that's ethical or not is another matter, but they can absolutely do it to start with. So it needs to be simple and it needs to be memorable. Things to consider in that is if you are going to use numbers, do you use numbers that you spell out? Like uh, one to one, is it one to one dot com or is it o n e t o o n e dot com? Whatever. Do you spell out the numbers? Do you use the numeric form of the numbers? If you are, I, I'm actually going to recommend that when you get down to that point, you should probably be registering all variations of that so that there is no confusion. Is it easy to spell? Uh, I had a domain that was a great domain, but it was very long and I used to have to spell it out every time. It was Oz E Sales, A U S E S A L E S, Oz E Sales. And the amount of times people would send me something that says, oh, yeah, Aussie sales, O-Z-E. No, no, Oz, A-U-S, Oz. Oh, yeah, Aussie, O-Z-Z-I-E. No, <laughs> A-U-S-E, sales. Uh, so I had to, you know, it was a great domain name, great name. It really worked for what we were trying to sell. 
really reflected our brand but there was just too many variations on it and we were getting too many people confused by what we were what what the domain name was so it's got to be simple simple it's got to be memorable it's got to be easy to spell and if you're using abbreviations like oz oz aus uh if you're using numbers one two three do you spell them? How do you, how do you get that through so that people get the right information? So that's the first thing you've got to consider. It needs to reflect your brand identity. So make sure that your domain name aligns with your brand's identities, values, and the products or services you offer. I, uh, in fact, there was a question on one of the forums and the, the, the lady or the person was talking about, we offer experiences. We offer, yeah, we offer experiences, but you know, I've been offering this type of experience and I've been, I've been using this domain name, but I'm ex looking at expanding out and I don't quite know what to do. And I, I gave them some advice and I said, well, maybe you should go to you are this experiences and events.com, which is really easy. It's, it's not too long. It's getting a bit long, but it's too long, or even the business name, you know, this experience and events. And then underneath it, you can have uh, something hikes, something picnic, something this, something that, and they're all products of the overall business. So, and then your domain names can reflect it. Maybe if the hikes end up being big enough and, you know, you need a separate domain or a separate website for it, you can actually register the, the domain name for it but you don't need to register the domain name it can just be under the main domain name so re reflect your brand identity is, is your brand identity fun is it serious what can the name be uh you know i went for ask charlie latham because in the in the beginning it was just like you guys have just got to go ask charlie she can tell you <laughs> Ask Charlie Latham, she can tell you. It, it literally became a buzz fave, um, phrase. I'm sure it still is to some extent. Uh, do I regret it? Yeah, a little at the moment, but I don't know what I'd rebrand to and rebranding at the moment. Well, that's a big effort. So yeah, I've really got to think about it and I needed to, I should have put more thought into it to begin with. But anyway, I didn't and we are here. Avoid my mistake. Uh, I've already spoken about avoiding numbers and hyphens. If you can, oh, hyphen, so the, the little dashes, the little minus signs that go between, uh, I have seen companies that have got the hyphens in the domain name because they think it looks better because it breaks out their, their company name and it looks better. People don't think about using hyphens and they don't think about where they need to go and it, it becomes really difficult. And when you're trying to spell it out while you're talking to someone on the phone, you know, something, 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 hyphen this hyphen like hyphen you know the minus sign the minus sign yeah yeah you know the little dash on the keyboard I've had those conversations with some people um so yeah avoid avoid using numbers I would I would actually go as far as to say avoid using numbers because you've got to determine whether you've got to spell it out whether you use the numerical version whether you actually register multiple domain names with each variation that you need uh, so avoid it if you can that would be my preference make sure you choose the right extension now when we're talking the extension we're talking .com .com.au .biz .org .net net.au and uh, .au and I'm talking specifically for Australians here but this this applies internationally uh the US is a little easier because they've got .com <laughs> they they've got .com .net .org uh make sure that you choose that right extension for your business uh and for what you're trying to do some of them are industry related extensions some of them are very expensive as well and you really need to ask yourself whether the novelty of having uh a dot author extension is worth the cost of what you'll get of what it what it's costing you uh, or, or, of the, or, or of the price you will pay. Most people, touch wood, most people, touch wood, will typically default to thinking it's a .com domain. If you say to someone, this is my domain name, and they don't get 
the extension or they don't hear it or they forget, but they remember what your business name is or what the domain name actually is, they will default to a .com. That, that's pretty much universal. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that we've been sort of working on for a long time with people. Even in Australia, well, now I'll come back to Australians, uh, but yeah, that most people will default to a .com. Your .com is probably safe. And at a very minimum, I would say that whatever else you do, also register the .com if you can get it. That will stop people squatting on your domain name or the name that you've chosen and trying to hot siphon traffic away from your legitimate brand by saying, well, this is my this is my website now. Now, you've seen it. You've seen where people have come and said, oh, you haven't got this domain name. I'll take it. And then all of a sudden, they're getting this traffic that was def- that is meant to go to this other domain name. It's nothing. There's nothing. Ill- they're not actually stealing the traffic. They've gone and registered a domain name because you didn't. It's not, it's not ethical. <laughs> it's not very nice, but it's not actually illegal. So, which is why I'd say I would grab at a minimum the dot com as well as anything else you do. If you can get the dot com, if you can't get the dot com, then you really need to think about is this the right domain name or should I, should I look for something else? Now, in Australia, because I am talking to a lot of Australians, but this will apply in other countries as well, where you have your own second level domain. So that's .com.au is a second level domain. If uh, many Australians will actually go search for .com.au before they search for a .com, especially if they know they're dealing with an Australian business, which I think is lovely. And I'm assuming that's the case in other businesses as well. So if you're in the UK, they'll search for a .com co.uk website as opposed to just looking for the .com. So I would, if you are an Australian business, grab the .com.au and the .com extensions. I would also these days grab the .au extension, which came out last year, year before, um, <clears throat> and is another variation that we can have. So three domain names, .com, .com .au, .au. Uh, I have in my own kit bag of domain names, I've got .biz as well. I've got a .biz domain name. I've got some .asn.au's. Now, .asn.au's are for associations. They're for uh, community organisations generally. They're, they're, they're people that are registered with the, under the Associations Act and have an association legal structure. So you can use those as well. So do choose the right extension, do some re- uh, investigation into what each one is, have a look at the costs and decide which one best works for you. And again, if you've got any questions, always reach out. I'm always there to answer questions, whether I can give you a sensible answer or not is another matter, but I will try and if I can't, I will be honest about it. You need to check what is available and I've already made, a, a, I've already hinted at that in that last bit that I spoke about. Make sure it's available. You need to go to a uh, domain register domain registration place. Uh, I actually also offer domain registrations to people. You can go to cheapdomainnamestoday.com.au and uh, have a look at what's available there and order through there or you can come to me and uh, have a chat to me. But make sure your desired domain name is available and available and have a look at where else it's written, what other domain, what other extensions it's registered with and what is on those websites. If it's not available, uh, you may be able to purchase it. But honestly, if it's already, if it's gone and someone has it registered, the cost of getting it is often prohibitive. So be a little careful there. Uh, the, the other thing that I want you to consider is when you choose your domain name, write it out all in lowercase. Physically write it out all in lowercase. Don't use any capitalization. Even if you want to use capitalization, don't. Write it all out in lowercase and then read it. And make sure that it doesn't say something that you don't want it to say. There are lots of unfortunate domain names out there that when you put them down in all lowercase and look at them, you go, oh, 
Oh, and I'm not going to give you any examples because a lot of them are very rude. <laughs> and that's not because that was deliberate. It's just because it's the way words break up. And when people look at it, they go, "It's what is it? Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. So write it all out and make sure that it's not an unfortunate translation. Not that, Make sure that an unfortunate translation can't occur. And finally, try and do a little bit of future proofing on your domain name. Think long term when choosing your domain name. Make sure that it's going. it can be with you for a long time and that you're not going to need to change it as your brand evolves. Uh, yeah, I like I said, ask Charlie Latham. If I'd thought about it, if I'd given it more than 10 minutes thought when I started this business back in 2007, I might have chosen something different. Uh, I kind of want to choose something different now, but it's it, there's a lot of work associated in doing it. It's not it's not it's not tragic, but there's a lot of work associated in doing it. So have a think about does this domain name suit me today, and will it suit me five years in the future, ten years in the future? Am I prepared to go through having to change my domain name as my business evolves? <coughs> okay. Sorry, it's really dry in here. You can hear in my voice, I think. All righty, so choosing a domain name. There's lots to consider. As I said, I do have domain registration. You can come and see me at cheapdomainnamestoday.com.au, cheapdomainnamestoday.com.au. You can register your domains there. You can also just do a check to see what's available and what's not. If you've got any questions or you disagree or you want to have a conversation about what I've spoken about today, leave comments wherever you are watching this or listening to it. Come across to my Locals community, askcharlieleatham.locals.com and join the conversation there. I also welcome reviews. Any reviews are good reviews. It will help me determine what content you want to hear more of, what you don't want to hear, what you like, what you don't like, all of those things. It also helps other people decide whether they want to listen to me rabbit on or not because, you know, 200 and something episodes, is she really that good? Does I really want to listen to 200 episodes of her carrying on or not? It would be very helpful. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. I drop content at 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every day of the week. I don't miss. And when the notification bell is rung, you'll get a little notification on your phone saying it's up. And you can go and listen to it while you're doing the dishes or going for your walk or driving to work or whatever it is you're doing. You don't have to stop. You can just listen to me. I will see you all tomorrow and we're going to talk a little bit about website speed and I might have a slightly different take on that to others. I'll see you tomorrow guys. Bye. Bye.